Hi, my name is Ben Shadroff, and today I'm presenting Consensus Layer Withdrawal Protection. Consensus Layer Withdrawal Protection is an optional way for Ethereum validators to set their withdrawal address as early as possible. It is entirely voluntary, does not change consensus, and the steps in this video will help you do it yourself. Setting your withdrawal address is good security. The CLWP community will broadcast your withdrawal address to as many beacon nodes as early as possible. This will not exit your validator. If you run an Ethereum validator server, have an Ethereum validator seed phrase, and you've not reset your withdrawal address, we highly recommend using CLWP. Please submit a submission before February 28th. Once your withdrawal address is set, nobody can change it again. So the steps in this video will show you how to do it yourself. If you need help, feel free to reach out to us on the off-chain Discord for any general advice. If you believe that your seed phrase has been compromised, we also have a white hat request form on our website, CLWP. XYZ. And once you've completed, you can come to the GitHub repository to make a submission for CLWP. Please never share your seed phrase with anyone, ever, always. We will never ask you for it. But please join us and protect the entire Ethereum staking community and yourself. The first thing you should do is check, is my validator withdrawal address set yet? You can go to Beacon Chain and you can then search for your validator index. For example, if your validator index was one, two, three, four, five, six, you could search for it. And under the deposits tab, you'll then see beacon chain deposits. If the withdrawal credentials has a starting of zero X zero zero, you've not set your withdrawal address. And this is a good indication. You should use CLWP to set it as early as possible. If however, you already have set one, it'll show up as zero X zero one and then your withdrawal address on the execution layer. This means that you cannot change it ever again, but you can now successfully uh, withdraw after the Shanghai Capella fork. So how do you CLWP? We're gonna go and do a demo, but in general, the process is to download the utility ETHDO, which is an open source utility for doing validator actions. You're gonna to wanna to put this then onto a clean, secure computer. This computer should be offline, and we've provided two different ways to execute it. One is called easy without a beacon node. And this uses a prepared offline beacon node list that we've cached on GitHub and allows you to do so without ever having to be online or run your own node. The preferred way though is to run your own beacon node and that's called the offline with node. And we go through the steps as well in a very similar manner to be able to copy an offline preparation file to your secure machine and then again, run the same type of result. The result will be a change operations.json file, at which point you're going to copy this back to your online computer, inspect it, make sure that inside this file that you have all of your validator indexes. If you do have multiple validators, we'll want you to split this file into multiple unique files per validator. You're going to want to triple check your two execution address. This is your withdrawal address, and it is incredibly important to make sure you get it correct because once you set this, there is no way to change it. It is not case sensitive. There is also a signature in here, and this is being signed using your mnemonic, which we will then use the public signature to be able to verify, is this in fact a valid signature for this particular validator? If everything checks out correctly, you're done. You just need to submit it, merge it, and we will then be able to broadcast this out with our volunteers to many different nodes. If however, we receive any sort of conflict with somebody else, also has a contested withdrawal address, we'll have a community moderated mechanism to arbitrate these particular issues. So what is a good air gap machine and private key management? We recommend using a spare local physical machine. You're going to want to format it with a clean installation of your preferred OS. Our preference is for people to use a Linux USB key. This is because it's a verified image, which you can run in memory, and the USB can be easily uh, formatted upon the completion. During this process, you should disable your Wi-Fi and Ethernet to ensure that all connectivity to this machine is disabled. We therefore don't recommend using any virtual machines or remote clouds because your host machine may be compromised or the third party may be compromised as well. If you don't have a spare machine or knowledge on how to use Linux USB keys, you might want to consider using recovery mode. Both Mac and Windows do have a recovery mode and allow you to reboot into a minimal OS where you can run commands. Again, this is not our preference, but it is a good fallback. Before doing so, you might want to use some sort of antivirus before running on this. 
what you're going to want to do is use another USB key to then copy over information to your secure computer and back again. For example, we would recommend copying a text file with your withdrawal address so you can copy and paste. You do not want to accidentally type in the wrong withdrawal address. Similarly, you'll want to copy over the offline preparation JSON files and the resulting change operation JSON files back to your online computer once completed. So never, ever, ever enter a seed phrase onto an online or instant computer computer and always make sure that even a temporarily online computer is not considered secure because it may phone home. So any machine that's um, online, even your beacon node should not be trusted with your seed phrase. You'll always want to write down your seed phrase offline, not on any machine and never share it with anyone. Use archival paper or even better, engrave it into metal Make sure that it's stored in a locked location, such as a safety deposit box or fireproof box. Never ever store it on a public computer, any public location, or USB keys. And we also don't recommend using seed phrases between different wallets and applications. I also recommend having a succession plan with family members or with your lawyer so that if you were to be uh, incapacitated, somebody else could reach it. Do not, um, so you really don't want to be using uh, any compromised seed phrase ever. For theory and validator seed phrases, you won't know that you're compromised until the hard fork. Um, so you should always set your withdrawal address to something very secure, ideally something new, and use CLDP to ensure that it's set as early as possible. If your seed phrase was compromised, they can potentially set it to a withdrawal address and steal your funds. So be very, very sensitive about where you put your seed phrases. So. Let's now go through the demo of how to use CLWP, and then we'll follow up. Now, in this particular demo, I'm not gonna be using an actual secure machine because it'd be too hard to show recording of, su of such. So I am using a, a cloud machine. Let's pretend though it was a secure machine. What you'll want to copy onto your USB key to get to your secure machine is your withdrawal address. So I've copied over my withdrawal address here. You're also gonna wanna copy over a downloaded copy of the eth do command that is appropriate for your secure machine. In my case, I'm running on Linux, so I've copied over eth do 1.26 in this Linux. You can find it out on GitHub, which you can see right here. If you go to Wheeltech eth do releases tag, and this is the version we recommend because it's the latest, you can then go here and download the appropriate one, copy it to your USB key, and then get it to your machine. You're also going to then want to choose, are you doing it offline without a node, the easy way, or offline with a node, a slightly harder, but even more secure way. For this demonstration, we're gonna do it the easy way, and it's perfectly secure. You can come on out here and be able to see that we have an offline preparation preparation.mainnettar.gz, so you're going to want to take this and uh, paste it on in. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be running it on a test net. So the command will be slightly different. Tar, ZXF, offline preparation, select what chain you're going on to. In my case, I'm using Gorley, but for everybody else, it should be mainnet. Once it's extracted, you should then be able to see that this resulting file is here. You're going to want to rename it offline preparation, rename this particular file to then offline preparation.json. Finally, what I'm going to do is extract out my eth do command. So tar zxf eth do. And you'll now see that there is an eth do command utility here. We can run it. And you should be able to see the help information about this utility. Next, what we'll want to do is actually run the operation. So in this case, we'll do eth do. We're doing validator credentials set. In this case, we're doing the easy way, which is called offline preparation. Offline, and then what we're going to do is pass in our mnemonic. In my case, I've saved my mnemonic to a variable, but for most other people, you'll probably type in all 12 or 24 seed words directly into here with spaces in between them. Then you'll want to then say withdraw address and copy in the withdrawal address that you want. I do not recommend typing it manually. Please use copy and paste and triple check to make sure that it's still the same. Once done, 
you're going to hit enter. And if I spelled mnemonic right, it would help. There we go. Okay, now that we've completed it, it doesn't show anything. Go ahead and run ls, and you'll be able to see that it created a new file called change operations. This is because we said offline, instead of broadcasting this change immediately, it creates this change operations file. You can use the cat utility to go ahead and um, have it list out exactly what it's doing. Inside this file, you'll see that I have actually two different uh, validators that were found using the seed phrase. Notice how it automatically found it. You can see that there's validator index 395212, as well as validator index 398919. In this case, I'm going to copy this change operations file back to my online computer. I'll want to split this file on up into two files. You can use any file editor you want to be able to do so, but what I'll do is go to the second message And you're going to want to split it up into two separate files, each starting with a bracket and a curly bracket message. So it should look like this. In this case, I'm only going to be broadcasting this one particular file. We'll then name this file 398919. We'll now rename this file from change operations to be the validator index, which is going to be 398919.json. This is now the file that I want to upload. It only contains a single validator. That validator matches this file name and the signature is valid. I'll then go to GitHub and you can follow our process to then submit on our GitHub repository a claim to then go to the CLWP repository. To do so, you'll go to GitHub, click on fork, create your own fork, once the fork is created, you're going to go to the chain in which you're trying to do. In this case, it would be uh, Gorley, but let's pretend it was mainnet. You'll then go ahead and click on Add File, Upload Files, choose your file, and then drop in the file that you just created. It should be a validator index.json. After you're done, you can upload one or multiple files in a single submit. You're going to commit these changes. Once the changes are committed, you're gonna go ahead and go to one commit ahead, click on this link, create pull request, and then again, finally click create pull request. I'm not gonna go ahead and click it right now because this will actually create a pull request, but that is the exact process for submitting a, CLP, a CLWP submission. We will then go ahead and moderate the submission. Let's finish up the presentation. So once you've submitted this, our CLWP bots and volunteers and large node operators are gonna start taking your valid submission and being able to load it onto their various nodes. This gives you an advantage if you were considered Alice and you were trying to set your withdrawal address, normally you would only be doing so to a single node. With CLWP, we'll be broadcasting simultaneously to many, many, many nodes very quickly. This gives you a statistical advantage over any potential compromise that if somebody else did have your seed phrase, they would only likely be able to try to compete again with one or two nodes, but not as many as what we intend to do with CLWP. Of course, it all comes down to chance. We think that this will give you a statistical advantage, but it can't guarantee anything. Still, it is a best practice. And we believe regardless of whether you're compromised or not, you should be setting your withdrawal address as early as possible for your own security. The Ethereum withdrawals will be supported in the Shanghai hard fork for the execution layer and the consensus layer in the Capella hard fork. These are going to be launched simultaneously. So you'll hear it interchangeably used that it's happening in Shanghai and Capella because it's the same time. Most validators, over 63% of the 490,000 plus validators that exist today, they have not set their withdrawal address. So don't feel too ashamed if you've not done it either. Most people didn't know. But if an attacker has compromised a validated seed phrase, badly, you likely wouldn't know until it's too late. 
and they would try to then set their withdrawal address to steal your validator and rewards. Once the withdrawal address is set to the execution layer address, the 0x01, it can never be changed again. So our recommendation is strongly set it as early as possible. So withdrawal address changes are submitted via the consensus layer. This means that there is no gas fee. The consensus layer is gasless. And to prevent a denial of service attack, the validator withdrawal address can only be set once. This isn't because they just thought of it. It's because they didn't want to have lots and lots of people trying to change the withdrawal address over and over and over again. Each beacon node can run one or even uh, thousands of validators. So each beacon node that receives a valid signature credential will then try to gossip uh, this message to other peers. And if the other peer um, has already received a valid signature, it's going to reject it. So it becomes a race. Whoever sets their withdrawal address fastest on all the nodes is most likely to then win the consensus. Consensus is formed amongst many validators associated to these beacon nodes, and it'll then attempt to include the set withdrawal address in an epic. Only 16 validator addresses can happen for each epic, and only 16 validator address operations exits can also happen per exit. So it really is important to set your withdrawal address um, so that nobody else sets it before you. And you want to make sure that you submit your own request. This can all be looked at from the Ethereum consensus layer specs for Capella. So in conclusion, I want to thank a number of people. In particular, we really need to thank Jim McDonald for creating ETH2 and for all the help he's given for mentoring us in CLWP. I'm going to give some shout outs to the Ethereum R&D team, the Ethereum magicians, the Ethereum cat herders, ETH staker, Flashbot, Kleros, Offchain, and all nodes for their help to make CLWP so possible. This was a really large community effort, and we definitely recommend if you're able to help us, please give us more help. Um, I also want to give a thanks to Tobes for helping create the CLWP XYZ website and for all the community moderation he's been doing. So thank you, all of you that are participating in CLWP. As a final reminder, please never share your seed phrase and never store it online. Make offline copies, make sure that they're in locked locations and have a succession plan documented. Thanks again for learning about CLWP and look forward to helping participate with you.